It's been about two weeks since I told you guys Jamaril Stewart's husband was arrested. Travis was arrested on August 24th, 2023 for assault and battery on a family member. I'll link my video here where I talk more about Travis's arrest. I show documents from the court showing he was arrested and Travis's father passed away a few days before he was arrested. That I've been going through a hard time and there's some stuff happening. Jamaril has definitely been going through a lot lately. She had a miscarriage, her father-in-law passed away, her husband was arrested. Jamaril has shared that she was traumatized because of what happened, but her kids were also traumatized. Her kids were actually involved in the abuse that took place. I'll share more about this later on in the video. She broke her wrist, and recently she did a sponsorship with BetterHelp where she uses this recent incident that happened in her life in order to sell better help to her viewers. As you know, life is full of ups and downs, especially during this difficult season of my life. I have found healing through personal therapy, especially therapy for trauma and grief. I listened to this entire sponsorship in her YouTube video and Jamaril never states that she actually uses BetterHelp or has used BetterHelp in the past. I think it's interesting that so many YouTubers promote BetterHelp, but I don't think most of them use BetterHelp. There's been a lot of controversy around BetterHelp. I've heard they underpay their therapist and sell their clients personal information. The FTC alleges that BetterHelp provided its users email addresses, IP addresses, and even responses to health questionnaires to third-party companies in an effort to help them more effectively target advertising. So before you click a YouTuber's BetterHelp link, do some research on this company. Not only does using this link help support my channel, but it also gives you 10% off your first month with BetterHelp. At this point, Jamaril hasn't really told us a lot about what happened. She basically said that she has experienced secondary trauma. And secondary trauma is the emotional duress that results when an individual hears about the firsthand trauma experience of another. I was traumatized in August. I just was. And what I am going through now, I have been told, is a secondary trauma. Accused name, Travis Shane Stewart. He's a white male. His height is approximately 6'6". Six, six. He's 380 pounds, green eyes, and under hair it says bald. Criminal complaint was filed on 8-24-23, just days after Travis's father passed away. Every time a minor's name is listed, I will say blank in place of their name. This is Jamaril's statement. I was in the bathroom at the other end of our long ranch house. I heard far off, raging, violent screaming. I ran through the house to meet my 12-year-old and my 14-year-old who were running from the kitchen. Blank stated, Daddy is beating blank and making blank eat an old moldy bagel from the trash. I walk into the kitchen. My 16-year-old daughter is washing dishes. I see both blank and blank sitting at the table near their dad. Blank continues to growl and cry, and Travis calmly continues to tell Blank to be quiet or he's get another spanking. I'm sure Jamaril meant to say, or he would get another spanking, but I'm reading this report word for word. I wash out my prep sink while mentally gathering information from around the room. My daughter left, and I made my lunch while helping my two-year-old. My mom, who was in the basement, messaged me, that my 16-year-old daughter, who had been in the kitchen the whole time through the incident with my husband, Travis Stewart, and our sons, was hysterical about what happened in the kitchen. I went and found Blank, and we sat in my minivan in front of the house and talked. She was crying and stated, I was washing the dishes and Daddy started screaming at Blank about him eating the burnt bagel, and Blank was screaming. He didn't want to. Daddy picked up Blank in some kind of ninja move by his arm and threw him on the blue chair in the kitchen, throwing him and slinging him in the air and slammed him down. Then Daddy beat him for several minutes. I wanted to throw the wooden spoon at his head to get him to stop, but I knew that would make more trouble. I gathered my thoughts and started making a plan because I feared for my children's safety. I went into the house to make a plan with my mom. I called 911 for help. I called the kids in to tell them to get cleaned up from playing. 
The sheriff called me and told me he was 25 minutes out. This concerned me because I was scared of waiting at the house for 25 minutes waiting for help because I was scared he would figure out. I called the police and I feared for our safety. So I had all the kids and my mom get in the van and we left to go to the magistrate. Blank has marks on his right upper arm and back. I took pictures. Blank wouldn't let me look at his legs and bottom yet because he didn't want to take his clothes off in front of his brothers and sisters. I was taking pictures in the van and told him I could look later in the bathroom. This criminal complaint was signed by Jamaril on August 24th at 4.05 p.m. This is a copy of the warrant for Travis's arrest, which was filed on August 25th, the day after Jamaril filed the criminal report on the 24th. He was charged with a Class 1 misdemeanor, and his trial date was set for October 20th, 2023 at 9.45 a.m. Just two days after Travis's court date, Jamaril took her kids skating on October 22nd and fell and broke her wrist. I believe it was on October 22nd. I was roller skating with my kids. She gave an update in one of her recent videos, and she says she visited her doctor on 1020. When I went to see my orthopedic doctor on October 20th. So I'm confused by the dates. The dates are not matching up here. She stated she fell on October 22nd, but then followed up with her doctor on 1020. And 1020 is also Travis's court date, and I would only assume she would have to be at that court hearing. Depending on how long the court hearing was, I guess it's possible to go to the court hearing and the doctor in the same day, but I think she mixed up the dates somehow. And I wonder why she's giving this specific date of when things happen. There has to be a reason why she's being so specific with these dates. Something's going on. I think most people would just say, I took my kids skating and I fell and broke my wrist. I think most people wouldn't give you the date that they broke their wrist. They would just say, yeah, I broke my wrist when I was skating. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, yeah. Jamaril mentioned she's been walking a lot lately. It's helping her clear her mind and kind of deal with everything that's going on. And some people have mentioned that she's lost a lot of weight. A viewer said, you're looking so good. How much weight have you lost? Keep your head up and moving forward with God's help. Jamaril said, hey, thanks. I'm down about 45 pounds so far, 25 pounds over a full year and 20 pounds over the last 12 weeks. Jamaril said in a previous video how much this situation has already affected her business. She's lost thousands and thousands of dollars in sponsorships. She hasn't been posting consistently on YouTube. She also stated in a previous video, I don't want to make me being traumatized part of my business. That's the update on the Stewart family. Let me know what you think. Leave a comment. Thanks for watching YouTuber Headlines. I'll see you soon in the next video.